come to our sermon time. My dear friends, when I read this account in Acts chapter 14 of Paul and Barnabas and their first missionary journey and then coming back to their home church, it stirs up in me many memories of how Dorothy and I also served as missionaries, going out from Melbourne and coming back to this home city. We went out actually seven times to Africa and came back here for what we call a home assignment. In the old days when we were young, we called it furlough. That's the time back in Melbourne, but, or should I say back in your home community, which for us was Melbourne, and that's um, then you go off again after some time back in home, the territory. So as we think about Paul and Barnabas, I invite you to pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we read with deep thanks the story of how you spread the gospel of your grace to us in Christ through the missionary work of these great apostles, Paul and Barnabas. Thank you for their preaching, the healing you granted through them, and also the refreshment of their being with their home church in Antioch. Enable us to serve you here in Melbourne, shining the light of Christ in our families and communities. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were here last week, you would have heard the, the, um, Paul's sermon there in Antioch of Pisidia, and the title was From Moses to Jesus. So Paul traced the Old Testament from the early days of the law right through to this, um, the, the Lord Jesus and his new, new gospel. Now there are two Antiochs in our story. Like, in fact, you know, there's a Brighton in every city in Melbourne, in, in Australia, you know, there's Brighton in Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia. There are Brightons all over the place. Probably a few Berwicks too, for all I know. Anyway, there are lots of Antiochs in their day over there. So we call the one over in Turkey Pisidian Antioch and the other one's the Syrian one, that which is their hometown. So off they go on their missionary journey. They've been to Cilicia and, 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 and Cyprus and they get up there north to Pisidian Antioch and they spread the gospel. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual to the Jewish synagogue. They spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. So these are Jewish people and non-Jewish people. So those people put their faith in Jesus. And that's all by the work of the Holy Spirit, using the preaching of the gospel to open the hearts of those who heard it to repent of their sin, to receive Jesus as their Lord and rely on him as their saviour. But there were other Jews, especially who are like Paul was way back before he was converted. He was out to try and destroy the church. They wouldn't accept that Jesus was the Messiah. So they opposed the gospel. They opposed all the, um, the preaching of this message. And they refused to believe. They stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their mind against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. And I presume that those signs and wonders were mostly in terms of healing people, like this chap we read of in Lystra. When they prayed for somebody and they were healed, they took that as a sign of God working through those apostles. So the people of that city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the Gentiles, with the apostles, and there's a plot afoot to both among both Jews and Gentiles, together with their leaders, to ill-treat them and to stone them. And stoning in the Jewish world meant execution. You are stoned until you are dead. Well, they fled a bit, they learned about that, that um, threat and they got out of that place and they fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and the surrounding country where they preached the gospel. So they took off. They left that city and went to Lystra. And there in Lystra was this man who had been lame. He'd never walked. He was lame from the, when he was born. 
And he listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul looked directly at him, just like Peter did in Acts chapter 3, that fellow who was lame also in the temple in Jerusalem. And Paul looked at him and saw that he had faith to be healed, faith, that is, in Jesus, whom Paul had been speaking about. And he, he called out, stand up on your feet. And the man stood up and walked. So that was a, one of the signs, one of the miracles of this period of the expansion of the church, where the Lord God granted those miracles of grace and healing was a predominant one of them. Well, when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Now, I want to give you a picture of the Lyconian religion. So they thought in the same Greek mythology of these gods, and there's one, the chief one is called Zeus, and then there's Hermes who's Lord the messenger. So they looked at Barnabas and Paul, saw this miracle and said, Barnabas, who's like the chief, he's chief of the mission, and Paul's like the spokesman, all said, Barnabas must be Zeus and Paul must be Hermes. So they said, look, it's terrific. Our gods have come down to us. They've done this miracle. We must offer them sacrifices. So they brought along these oxen to get to slaughter them there to make a sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas saying you're gods. That's wonderful. Ha! No, it's not. So, when Paul and Barnabas heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed into the crowd, shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We're only human, like you. We're bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things, like Zeus and, and uh, Hermes, to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And so, He's talking there about God's general grace to people like giving us our food and so on. So this is God's work in us, to us, his kindness. And Paul says, this is the true faith, the Jesus that I'm preaching. Well, there were some Christians made in that city of Lystra. And we read later on that they're, they're what they call disciples, However, there was a lot of hatred stirred up by some Jews who came from Antioch and Iconium. They won the crowd over and they stoned Paul. They dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. And stoning, you remember, is a usual way to be killing somebody. Like Stephen, he was stoned till he died. In the Old Testament, people were stoned until they died too. Well, how did Paul survive this stoning? I presume he was knocked out. Maybe he was actually killed. And God raised him up from the dead. We don't know that. Or maybe he was just concussed or whatever, and he came good. But it, that we read that the disciples gathered around his body as he was out there outside the city. And of course, they were praying, weren't they? Dear God, have mercy on us. Grant us your healing to this Paul who's brought us the gospel. And we read, to our astonishment, that he got up and went back into the city. They don't even say they carried him back to the city. Like he walked back in. Went back into the city where he'd got the, um, the, the threat of his, against his life. So this is one of the great miracles of this first period of the missionary outreach of the gospel. Paul and Barnabas preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. They said, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. And of course, they just experienced hardships of Paul getting stoned, for example. Now that tour of Iconium, Lystra, and Pisidian Antioch reminds me of how Dorothy and I, in our missionary years, we used to do this. There's the theological teaching in the terms of these men who are going to be ministers and a few women, not very many of them, and there are the wives as well. And then there's the vocation. 
especially the long vacation over the dry season, the cool time, and that's when they all went home and we went off to visit. And we'd go around to the different places where the students lived and we'd stay with them and we'd talk with them, preach them, encourage them in their Christian faith, meet their families, their um, children, the other older children if they had some, their parents, in-laws and all the rest. It was a terrific time of strengthening the faith of those theological students who then came back to college in the August and went on with their studies. And it was a really valuable time. We thank God for that. So Paul and Barnabas did that. They also provided for leadership in those churches they'd planted. That wasn't our role. I didn't ever say, you can be an elder, you can be a pastor and all that. It wasn't for me. That's for the bishops and them to work out. We trained the students, but we didn't choose them to be ministers. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for each in their church, and with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Now, each of those times when they were appointing them and committing them to the Lord was really an ordination service, just like it happened last Saturday. There I was in the cathedral with 18 men and women who the archbishop ordained to be deacons in his church. And I thank God, I don't know all of them, but the ones I know I have great confidence in as people who know the Lord and who preach his gospel and who care for the people they are entrusted to. Well, let's go on now to the trip back to Antioch in Syria for their first home assignment. And we read that after going through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they'd preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia, just like we also, when we're coming back to Melbourne from Tanzania, we'd stop off at different places. You know, you get off the plane and you get on the next flight the next week and it's no extra cost. So then we had a great deal of fun visiting our friends and other people and enjoying places there. I don't say we really did a lot of missionary work as we had that hop, step and a jump, but it was lovely fun um, going to different places on our way both to and from Tanzania. So Paul and Barnabas sailed back to Antioch where they'd been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. This is what we call home assignment. Now, Chris and Julie Dean, for example, are out there in Timor-Leste. They're our link missionaries. And in a three years' time, or perhaps a bit less than that now, they'll be back here for what we call home assignment, or in the old language, furlough. It's very important in the CMS mission. They plan it for all the missionaries to have time back here. So we listen to what the apostles used this, this time for. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and now how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles and they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So this reporting back is exactly what the CMS missionaries, our son Luke and his wife Jane, they did yesterday. There was a missionary care fellowship meeting over in Doncaster and there they were standing up the front and explaining about the work they've been doing in East Asia among international students, bringing many of them to saving faith in Christ, building them up in their faith, helping them know the Bible, developing their gifts and talents and making them great Christian leaders. It's a wonderful thing they've been doing over the last seven years and they came to report back to the home church, us in Melbourne. This is how things have been going. So one of the purposes is to thank the home church and the CMS supporters for their prayers and offerings to CMS for the work, support of the mission and to encourage all the members like you to keep on praying and supporting CMS. And you know that the Berwick Anglican Church gives some of its income, some of the mon money you put into the offerings, goes to the CMS work and other enterprises too, not just to the stipends of the ministers. So Paul and Barnabas, they're, they're, they're on their mission. Um, they've come home with the power of the Holy Spirit sent out by him, the local church in Antioch. 
So that church back in Antioch had supported them both with funds and with prayer and welcomed them home on their first missionary journey. And on that mission, the apostles had preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to, about God's grace to us sinners in Christ and the Holy Spirit had opened the hearts of several people who then became what we call disciples. And they repented of their sins, they received Jesus as their Lord and relied on him as their saviour. Yes, there were hardships. And when we read about these, we recognise, as Paul wrote in Ephesians, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the whole armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. So we press on with Chris and Julie Dean, praying that God will enable them to stand their ground with the armour of God, and together with them, we run with perseverance the race that God has marked out for us, looking to Jesus, who initiated our faith, and will bring it to completion at our great transition to glory whenever that time shall be. Let's pray together now as we finish. Lord God, our Father, you called Paul and Barnabas to take the message of your gospel of grace in Christ to the people in those communities around the Mediterranean Sea, like Cyprus, Iconium, Lystra and Derby, and then to come back to their home church for their first home assignment to report on your great works and to receive refreshment and supporting fellowship from their dear friends in Antioch. Bless us, we humbly pray, in our own perseverance and in our support and encouragement for Chris and Julie Dean and other missionaries, for your glory and for their standing firm through their dangers, toils and snares, for Jesus' sake.